Is the Snug Pack Jungle Blanket better than the U.S. Army Poncho Liner? Let's check it out. You guys may have seen this topic being thrown around on YouTube. A lot of people are claiming that the Jungle Blanket from Snug Pack is the new improved version and should replace the U.S. Army poncho liner. First, let's get something straight. I see a lot of you guys in the comment section calling it a wooby and calling me out because I don't call it a wooby. That's an Army cultural thing. In my entire experience in the infantry world, I've never heard another grunt call it a wooby. Not to insult anybody, I've generally only heard that in the support community, or as what we used to affectionately refer to as pogues. So yes, a lot of army guys call it a wooby. Most grunts don't. Besides this video, I've never referred to it as a wooby, and I never will. Get over it. Now because both of these blankets are fairly light, I've said before, at least with the poncho liner, it is no type of winter piece of gear. So since it's starting to get warm, I'm actually going to start playing with both and start comparing them. Hopefully, I'll have a definitive answer for you guys. Until then, I just wanted to point out a few similarities and differences for you guys and give you guys a couple things to think about. The poncho liner is definitely older. It's older material, older technology, but it has become a favorite piece of gear in the Army since its existence. As a matter of fact, many of you guys probably clicked on this video just because it was in the title. I spent some time researching both of these items together, and as it turns out, they are both about the same price, depending on where you get them from. They are both almost the same weight. It appears that the poncho liner is usually one to two ounces heavier than the snug pack blanket, which is interesting because the snug pack blanket is a lot thicker. I would say it's at least three times as thick as the poncho liner, and it also compresses down to about the same size ball as you would the poncho liner stuffing that down into your ruck. They're both about the same size. So besides the actual thickness of material, the loft of the blanket, it's not that different from the poncho liner. However, Snug Pack does make these claims that their blanket is extremely warm. I forgot what they call their high speed system, whatever this warming snakeskin stuff is. They're claiming this makes you super warm. I have used this as an addition to another sleeping bag in the winter and it does warm you up a little bit. As a standalone piece of gear in the winter though, this would definitely fail you, so I wouldn't even try that. I'm just going to talk about the differences in these two blankets and many variations, but specifically about hammock camping in the warmer months. As you'll notice, I have my poncho liner strung up as an under blanket for my hammock. You could do that because the poncho liner comes with these strings at the end. The strings on the poncho liner are designed to be used in conjunction with the poncho for the old school ranger roll sleep system. I've done a video on my winter version of that, so go check that out. The snug pack blanket, on the other hand, has nothing. No grommets, no clips, no strings, nothing. You could always sew your own strips into the corners or wherever you need tie down points. But when it comes to altering gear, the way I see it, if I'm gonna spend 40 bucks on a piece of gear, I don't wanna to have to alter it. It should be functional as I buy it. Yes, you can use the poncho liner as an under blanket and a hammock, but definitely not in the winter though. It will not keep you warm in the winter, so don't even try it. So here's what we do. I have all the strings on the corners tied together, and then I just simply hook them over the beaner for my hammock. As far as the middle section, I told you guys, I always carry rubber bands with me. Well, there you go. You ball up the center line, pull it through your rubber band, and then you've mostly cut off this area right here. Now, the reason you do that is to trap heat from escaping out of the poncho liner. The whole use of the under blanket is to trap heat under you. So if you just left this center line of your blanket hanging, you've got a massive gap for warm air to escape from or cold air to come into. So you cinch that off like that really quick double over the rubber band so it doesn't come off easy and there you go you've got a seal also with under blankets i generally like to keep them as high up on my body as possible my head would be about right here and then it's going to stop right at my feet so since it doesn't reach all the way to this beaner i have this simple fastening rope with these quick lock hooks very easy to use you can actually use these with shock cord as well so very cool system to use same thing at the foot end i've bunched up the center line got a rubber band here holding it and 
we have a nice seal. If it's a little bit cold, I like to use a sleeping bag in a hammock so that my feet stick in the toe box and the sleeping bag's not gonna fall off of me at night. In the warm months, however, where I just need to put something light over me, I do like the jungle blanket or the poncho liner. The tie-off points on the poncho liner already put it above the jungle blanket, but that doesn't necessarily fail it. Is there a way to use your jungle blanket as an under blanket as well without tying it off? Well, let's check it out. These were actually sent to me in one of the viewer mail episodes. If you have something without a tie-off point or a grommet, you essentially use this and you have a loop there. So let's see if this will work for the jungle blanket. So another thing is down the middle of the poncho liner, you have even more tie-off points. So I like to create loops there. We got a beaner, so when I crawl in there, I can hook those together with the beaner and then the blanket stays basically around me. So this works pretty dang well. Get my stuff dirty, that's all right. Show you guys how this works. So you can loosen this up and open it up a little bit, just enough to get some decent sized material in there. You've got to get enough material in there so that it'll get a good grab and a hold. And so as soon as there's tension on this line, it closes on itself and there you go. Unless you do something crazy that's not coming off. I would actually choose something like this over altering my stuff. Then my gear is not permanently altered. You know, you can remove these and you can use them for something else later on. You're not stuck with this alteration. Let's get the other ones on there and see how it looks. I can't wait till it warms up. I'm so tired of being cold. Days like today are tricky. Feels like about 60 degrees in the sun. But if you're in the shade like I am, and we have this cool breeze coming in, it is ice cold. Soldiers go to the field for the first time in Germany and they are miserable. <laughs> so I can already tell we're gonna need some extra clips or something here if we wanna wrap this blanket over us. Or I guess you could sew some Velcro strips on there. So when you climb in, you just put it on itself and there you go. But we'll climb in and check it out. Can't put too much tension on the under blanket because you'll throw those rubber bands off. Wow, you see that guys? I don't know what I did different. Maybe I just have more tension on the blanket this time in that direction, but I don't even need to clip it together up here on itself because I got in and if you have the blanket essentially hanging higher than where your body lays, you don't even really have to worry about pulling it over yourself because as you sit in, the hammock's gonna go down and then your blanket stays in place. The only thing you have to check is down here on your butt. You don't want your under blanket material sitting against your body. You need at least a little bit of room in there for your body to heat that air up that's trapped. So I think I have too little. I think I might have to loosen it up a bit. Watch when I lay totally back. And there we go. Same setup. Pull in here. A little bit thicker. I'll bring you guys with me just to show you what this looks like. I didn't have the poncho liner pulled up as high, but it would essentially look the same. So that's it, man. I'm in a cocoon. That's pretty cool. And as soon as I climbed in and got my body under this blanket, I could feel the warmth. And so that's pretty cool, man. We're blocking the wind and warming it up. I've got about an inch between my butt and the snug pack blanket. So that's probably enough to leave room for trapped heated air in there. And this is cool, man. So you don't even have to worry about cinching this together in the middle. I'm going to keep experimenting with this setup. And I will give you guys a final verdict on which blanket is better and other applications as well. Otherwise, I just wanted to show you guys this experiment and also show you the possibilities of both blankets, but especially the modularity of the poncho liner because it simply has tie off points on it. One thing to note, since I've been laying in here, the jungle blanket definitely does block the wind a lot better, significantly better. I felt the warmth when I was laying in the poncho liner but you could still feel the breeze cutting through because it is a really cold cutting wind today. Um, but right now, the only time I feel it is when I stick my hand out. So it's like night and day. That's a plus. So, so far the jungle blanket blocks wind pretty well.
Hope you guys enjoyed this experiment. Stay tuned for part two later this summer. Make sure you like and subscribe. And until the next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Out.